Good day, wonderful viewers, listeners, anywhere you are around the world. This is Jason Jai, the voice inspiring young people. This program is designed to talk to young people and find out what they are doing in a bid for them to inspire other young people. And again, for the older generation that think that the young people are not doing anything meaningful with their lives, we have a lot of surprises for you. You will be shocked to discover the amazing work young people are doing in this beautiful land of ours and beyond. So we will be talking to these young people, getting to know them and getting to know what they do so that they would inspire other young people that are in this country and feel that they cannot make it in Gambia. We have a lot of surprises in store and today in the studio with us is one such dynamic young lady in the person of Rose F. Coker. Rose, you are welcome to Jason Jai The Voice podcast. I think I've known you for quite a while. I've known that some, some time back you were in some, doing some craft and uh, suddenly I saw you with the women uh, selling oysters and you know, helping them to harvest their oysters and now you are doing some phenomenal work. So Rose, talking about your products, now let, let's look at, you've moved from the Rose Africa doing the handicraft now to the foods. And obviously, everybody needs food. Now, you've moved to processing. What, again, apart from the challenges you mentioned, do you have any other thing that maybe you can say is a challenge? Because you said you use the uh, pounding, mm -hmm. uh, naka, uh, what do you call it? Mortar and pestle. Uh, mortar and pestle. <laughs> Gena kur. Gena kur to, to do your pounding. Yes. But, I mean, obviously there, there is machinery and yeah. you, would, you would love to get that. Yeah. But apart from that, what other challenges do you think or would you say you, you face? Electricity. Hmm. <laughs> Electricity, well, it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity to go solar. It's expensive, but... It, it, yeah, until I get there. But currently, imagine 30%. Yeah. I have three freezers in my store. So you mm. buy a thousand, you only get like um, 70. Yeah. That's... 70. And it's not even uh, constant. Yeah. Plus, I have frozen products. Wow. Yeah. So that, that is a challenge. I really want to go solar. Mm. I really do. I'm sure you, you'll get... You get <laughs> you, help will come. Help, help, help will come. come. So now... As a, as a young lady doing this, what do you, where do you see yourself maybe in the next five years? I'm happy to answer that. So in the next five years, I want to see um, Quick Cook as a big processing facility. Like I always say, where we'll have people working in shifts because that will enable us to diversify our product line. Currently, we're just at, what, 32 products and we can go up to 60 different assorted products. So that is what I want to see. I want to see a facility where we have a line of products that we have different people working in different departments. Nui Safed Kobo, Nui Rahas Hop, Nui Peel, Nui Dry. So that, that you created employment then? Oh yeah, big time. I want to employ at most 100 people. Wow. That is my goal in the next five years. Wow. Yes. So, so now, how did you come to... You know, I, I begin, you, uh, you, 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 you said, I believe you said you started selling oysters yes. how did you now graduate from oysters because you see when you look at gambia mm -hmm. we are used to people maybe the woman they used to sell get the stuff mm -hmm. you know she'll be there selling her uh, peanuts you know for 10 years mm -hmm. she's just selling peanuts what moved you away from that mentality moving from oysters now to 32 products um again like i said i've i've always been creative and I really want to have a client tell base that would not need to go to the market, right? So I need to think fast. I need to think smart, right? So that is why. So I just didn't move from the oyster. Oysters are also part of the product line. Okay. But they spark, the oysters spark what I am doing today. Because mm -hmm. I said, I just don't want to be selling one product. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I love to be engaged. Mm -hmm. So now with these different assorted products, mm -hmm. one thing I've learned from this business, mm -hmm. there are some names of my products in English, a lot of people didn't know. They knew it when they started buying my products. Like for instance, Ogiri. 
a lot of people didn't know is from sesame seed. Ogiri. Yeah, you see, there you go. <laughs> yeah. The ogiri they put in soup. Yes, it's sesame seed. So a lot of people didn't know. So I've also got to learn, and now I'm also educating my customers. Because some will come, they see this. Ah, the moko de gisin ko de No, you have educated me. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happened. So okay. me, that's the beauty about the business. Aside mm. the money bit, but you know, a, a customer feeling so educated, so informed. Mm. For me, I, I smile when the customer leaves. So apart from being innovative, because you know, as we were chatting before mm -hmm. uh, earlier, you talked about you know having all the ingredients to prepare a particular meal. Yes. So. Is it part of your innovation that you sat down and thought, okay, what will it take to cook, prepare domoda? Yes. So let me get all the ingredients. Yes. So if I walk into your shop now, yes. I can get, without going to the market, yes. I can get all the ingredients possibly for domoda. Okay. Or yeah. So the only thing you, meal. yes. So for domoda currently, because obviously I don't have the machines mm -hmm. and granite is one sensitive product I would never let someone else do for me. Okay. Right? So that's why we don't have peanut butter paste yet. But when we get the machines, we'll definitely do it. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I have not, I'm not selling is meat. That's the protein. Okay. So you buy everything and then you just go buy your meat. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. So for but the higher road, you'll, you'll, you'll oh get yeah. to buy meat. Oh, oh yeah. So because at the, at, the, at the end of the day, I don't think, especially with this young generation, I don't know whether it's Gen, Gen, Z. Gen Z or <laughs> Gen which X. one it is, Gen millennials Alpha. or which one. <laughs> I, I, I don't see this generation going into the market and getting themselves, you know, muddied up, you know, with the potter potter and everything. I, I, I believe there is going to come a time that people will just want to go to a place and have a one-stop shop. Most definitely. And have, so, so for now, what, what meals do you have? Possibly almost all the ingredients. So I have super. No, so so you can you can so, show us what you have. So I didn't bring most of them because they are frozen products. So okay. these are only the dried products. Okay. Yes. So for super right now, oh, I mean okra soup. Yeah. So let let's say I want to prepare okra soup. Uh, I don't have all the ingredients. I just have few that can go into your okra. The people are watching whether I can cook. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you cannot cook the large uh, jola pick it. right <laughs> so these are this is what would go into super currently you have the, so so what do you have here we have palm oil okay already sieved and clean see? from where oil. this one doesn't sleep no ah you've seen it since it since i came it's not it's not even close to and the place is cool yeah, this, <laughs> okay so we have palm oil this is a half liter okay so we're trying to um have menus that will start from four people Okay. Right. So the type of menu I would want to create in the short term would be um, a menu for just four people. So you can come and take a bag for super, and it's just for four people. Okay. So this, you think this will do for four people? Yes. Okay. It's so you have soup. You have the palm oil. Yes. From from where? This one is conakry. Conakry yes. palm oil, not bisau. Okay. Yes. Bisau and is then, also good though. And this is. This is um um shrimp, dried smoked shrimp. shrimp powder. So this is the shrimp. They put shrimp powder in palm oil, in super. These are all. It's better than the maggies and. The, oh, okay. Right? So it's like a seasoning. seasoning yes. So okay. that's the the shrimp, shrimp powder. Okay, but so if you are allergic to shrimps, you yeah. avoid this. You avoid that. All right. So we, that's the sesame, the ogiri. Ogiri. Sesame seed paste. So the, you'll put all this for one. No. So this is the, this is this will be a a, a lot yeah, for four people. Uh -huh. So that's so. why I'm saying that that's where we went to get to. That you would just open and it's enough for four people. Okay, so if you are buying, make sure you don't put all this ogiri. No, because this that one for four people. This one will be in trouble. Okay, and this <laughs> and is this is lubi. You've heard of lubi, lubi, right? the the hard the hard thing, yeah. the stone. In English, it's called alum salt. It took me a while to know. So that. so so you ground it. Yes. So when they are putting lubi in soup, I thought they put the stone in. But the stone melts. Too yeah, much. so they put it so that it melts. Yeah. So you, you have already done the. Yeah, you don't need to grab. Uh, like you don't okay. need to really struggle cooking. Inter interesting. So some would, some would not. The dried shrimps. Shrimps. Yeah, okay. Some would, some would not. Okay. So basically, these are. So, but the catfish and other things. Yeah, we have, we have. Small but you said you have some frozen yes, items. Okay. Yes. So we have ingredients for. So this will also go for um. So this will go for plasas as well. So plasas. Any of the plasas. Cray -cray. Anything, because the base is... Cassava good. leaf soup. Everything. This would go. Wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what else do you have? So um, what else do we have here? So we have bay leaves. This would go for your 
um, Benetton okay, or your one, palm oil stew. This one you put it there and then you take it out after when no, you're you leave serving. it there. It gives it that. But when you are serving, oh yeah, when you are serving, you uh, remove it. I don't want to I, I I I I know how to cook now. <laughs> Dry it yet? yet? Yes. See how clean. <laughs> how clean wow ready to cook uh -huh. yes and this is bay leaf so this is the powdered form of the bay leaf, bay leaf okay yes. all right and this is lime it's pickled with pepper so i'll give you this this is a local knowledge i learned from my mom and grandmom so normally when you get lime yeah. you see some white stuff on it yeah so this i've had this since is it march or so march april mm. and there's no white stuff there because it's pickled with um pepper pepper this is the best way to preserve so it. this is what this is for indeed if you want to use it to cook you can cook but for some of us that want it for lime juice this no, is peppered lime juice. no no trust me so i have a client who buys it and i ask her how he's like you need to try it i like with the because it's not really really spicy trust me it's just three three um how would i put it Rose, don't tell me to buy this and then i have i go and have peppered no, lime juice no it's not peppered it's just three pepper that is there people so, are so it's, it's, it's a good have lemonade juice they said I was like, how? My, for me, myself, I was shocked. Okay, I'll, I'll buy it and oh, then... Oh, we made a sale. I'll, in, in my next program, I'll <laughs> tell tell my the viewers how, how, it, how it is. Yes. I okay, I, what, what is this? Bonga? Yes, kecha. You know kecha, right? What is kecha? Dried smoked bonga. You know, you have, if you have um... benachini kecha. So this is the kecha powder. So we grounded the bonga into powder. This is all part of the seasoning. So Very soon, the, the market women will start... <laughs> going up in arms against you because I, I i don't need to go to the market then. you don't need to really you don't need, but uh, again, uh, and that's what and this is cloves powder Horum pole. i've been looking for cloves powder okay so okay yeah, interesting <laughs> interesting right yeah so wow. these are basically and then you have the dried shrimps yes yeah, the dried smoked shrimps and you see it's well cleaned. okay you have dried smoked shrimps and this other one is what it's, it's also dried smoked shrimp oh it's dried smoked. yeah so this one is dried smoke bonga powder that is oh, the kecha powder. So okay. it's different from the shrimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, so these ones are for seasoning. Yes. We try to avoid all this maggi wow. that you don't know what is in so, it. So, you know, because the, the part of the reason we have this program mm -hmm. is to encourage young people that are looking at the problems in the country. Yeah, a lot. But, you know, one of the things you said before we started the interview, is, and I think during the interview, is you like solving problems. For me, that mentality and that attitude is what Gambia needs. There are a lot of problems a in this country. Lot. And until we move away from complaining about the problems to solving the problems, we will not see development. And these, these problems are not going to be solved just by anybody. But everybody in your area where the problems exist, yeah. you innovating and coming up with the solutions is the way forward, sure. especially for our young people. If you are following the program, this is JC Njai, the voice inspiring youth. We want you, the young person out there, to draw inspiration from the life of Rose F. Manga. Uh, well, Coca. That's okay. there Before your husband shoots me. <laughs> I, I used to know you as Rose Manga. Yeah. But Rose Coca, yes. uh, draw inspiration from her life, her story. She has overcome the challenges. She is a solution provider. And that is what Gambia needs. Young people arise and be solution providers. So let's talk. You said in the next five years you want to, you know, get uh, employ about 100 people and move your business to a point that somebody comes in and can just pick up a meal bag and go and do, do, yep. do your own thing. In wow. Hour. So what, what, what keeps you... What inspires you? Um, so for me, my inspiration, I'm a Pan-Africanist, I'll say. So my inspiration has always been drawn within Africa. I love to see what other African youths are doing. I love to see how far they go with their innovation. And for me, that's what keeps me going. Because I always say, if they can do it, I can't. I have hmm. nothing limiting me, right? I have the knowledge. I have my hands. The internet is there. It's just a click away. So... <laughs> interesting because i know you are married yes i am and i know your husband is not in the gambia yes he's not i know for many women your age women like you in gambia where the lights are going off 
where it is hot. We are getting into the rainy season. Poto Poto is going to set in and mosquitoes and everything. But you decided to stay here, make a living, and uh, not necessarily join your husband immediately. So why? Why? <laughs> Um, again, Gambia is home. There is no way like home. And but you got married. Yes, my husband is Gambian. <laughs> he also wants to come back home. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we can only make it home. Mm. In, no, in no man's home, but mm. our home. Mm. So um, for me, it's like I said, it's the passion I have for what I'm doing. Right? I, I can see myself going beyond this. And I can only do it here. Mm -hmm. And whilst doing it here, I'm also trying to build other young people up, those who are working for me. Eventually, they become the boss, and the Rose Africa brand can continue doing other stuff whilst they are already focused there, and we continue to create more employment. Mm -hmm. So I've sacrificed some bit of my marriage with understanding from my husband to pursue my dream, and this is my dream, to become a multi-millionaire businesswoman. Well, uh, Mr. <laughs> Koka, we salute you yes. for... Letting your <laughs> wife stay in Gambia and inspire Gambian youth, support yes. Gambian youth. And, you know, we are really proud of you. As I said, I've known you for a while. I know you went for the Mandela Fellowship. Yes. So maybe share a bit about that. Okay, so that's a great experience I always want to share. Um, so for that one, it was, it was um, a program I was really looking forward to, right? So I started following it in 2016. It has started in 2014. So I looked at it in 2016, I applied, then I wasn't ready, I just started business. Mm -hmm. So I started following to see what other young leaders are doing before they go, when they come. I kept following the track line, kept following. So in, I always say this and it sounds funny. In 2020, I, w I was going to apply and COVID. I was like, nope, I don't want to do this virtually, I want to go. <laughs> I want to go to America. So in 2022, when the application came out, mm -hmm. I knew I was ready. Okay. Because I had started um, Quick Cook in 2021. Mm -hmm. So I needed at least two years so I can have a portfolio because I really wanted to apply based on what I was doing. Okay. So I did that. For, for some reason, I just knew I was going to go because mm -hmm. I was so, so ready. Mm -hmm. And I prayed about it. And I did. I just applied, sent it to my mentors. Everybody vetted it. And they were like, you're good to go. And I made it to the interviews, first round, second round. Yeah, and I went. So what, what, what was the experience like? It was great. You wouldn't believe being in the same room with 700 leaders from around the African continent. You get to meet people for the first time from Mauritius, Madagascar, countries as you just hear. Mm. But you actually get to, to meet individuals, yes, some are there. light skin. You know, the cultural exchange for me was, mm. wow, you realize that in some countries you have similar cultures, in some, the food. For me, it was just a whole. And that also built uh, my network and also part of my family. So now I hold them as family. Mm. So now I can travel to any part of Africa and I know I have a brother or a sister, sister there. there. Yeah. So what's your key takeaway from that mission? Uh, my key takeaway is just be a leader. You just have to be a leader because you go there, you meet other leaders doing some marvelous work. And mind you, Gambia is a small country and when we went, woo, everybody knew about the Gambia because wow. of our V. The mm, adjective. Yeah. So people were started calling their countries the Nigeria, the Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> so no, me, the yeah, only one, the Gambia. The Gambia. So for me, my takeaway was um, the networking because no one can pay you for your network. Yeah. And for me, having the opportunity to network with, you know, great Americans there in Gambia for you to meet the speaker, you have to go through so much protocols. Mm. In America, it's just an email away. So we went to places that even some ordinary Americans have never visited. Mm -hmm. We get to we got to meet people like for Tony Blinken. We met Tony Blinken. Okay. He signed our certificate. Oh. So that experience was was amazing. Great. Well, Rosa, we don't have much time left. Thank you so much. Thank but you. we will definitely have you back <laughs> we need to. on JC the Voice, yes. inspiring youth. Thank you. But what's your maybe last word to the young people? Maybe look into the camera and just speak to the young women, young people in the Gambia. Yes. So for young women in the Gambia, um, my word to you would be, there are a lot of opportunities in the Gambia. Don't underlook any job. So I, I once told my husband, I want to open a shoe mending shop where people with worn out shoes or people just need to polish their shoes. That is a business anybody can do. Just have a shop. Let people know you that 
if your shoes are dirty i can clean it if they're worn out i can sew it and then repackage it back and then give it to the individual just a business anybody can do car wash as well you can have a standard car wash mm. it doesn't need to be at the petrol station yeah. that you can do Mer we just get this have lk you can also have your get this have branded you go to nigeria you see their chinchi it's well packed we have so many things we could do we have so many fruits salon plum can do kode gisati we're stopping us from growing salon plum and juicing it mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities so don't underlook bull and help that will help that anything you lay your hands on pray about it and it will definitely come to pass well that's rose uh, f Ma f coca <laughs> uh from rosa Vrick yeah. and quick cook uh G gambia please patronize her mm -hmm. but this is what we are here to do to talk to young people so that they would inspire other young people. This is Jason Jai, The Voice, signing off. Thank you for following our program.